Episode four of Shea Benson. Yes, Graham Dillett, one of my all-time favorite Canuck out on the PGA Tour. How are you, Graham? Not bad, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. Where are you located at? Where are you at these days? I'm in Boise, Idaho, where I live here full-time now. So, um, yeah, just kind of getting through day by day. Got two little ones at home and just keeping them busy, and uh, that's about it. Now, are you healthy enough to golf? Uh, are, are the courses open where you're at? Yeah, we've been playing a little. The courses are open here. All the private ones, the city-owned, like the muties are closed, but uh, all the ones that are privately owned are open. So I've been playing a little bit, a couple times a week, um, just kind of for something to do to get out of the house or whatever, but I'm not trying to overdo it because I still want to try to be as careful as I can at the same time, but keep my sanity. So it's just kind of like a balance, but... Everyone either walks or you, if you take a car, you just have your own cart. And uh, it's, it's weird afterwards. I'm so used to just going in, settling up bets, having a couple beers or whatever. But that's that's done now. It's all you pay over your phone and you stay away. And uh, it's strange. So like everyone, I'm looking forward to this all coming to an end. But uh, we got to do what we can, obviously, to try to stay as safe as we can. Now, you've played some events, I believe, earlier this season uh were you planning on playing some when the tour restarts or are you still uh, on on a, a medical leave uh for for injuries yeah so i played like four events this fall um it was just kind of more of just to see where i was at and i was hurting a bit but good enough to play but i you know i wasn't able to practice at all because like just putting in the time is what really takes us toll on my back so I was playing kind of every day, but not practicing. And I mean, you know how hard it is if you're not able to practice, play against the best players in the world. It's pretty tough. But uh, and then went to Sony and missed the cut there. But I was actually playing decent and feeling OK. And then we got to Tory the next week and I was actually feeling really good, as good as I had in a long time. And just freakishly on Wednesday, I was hitting balls in the range and I, you know, I hit a five iron and just like rated impact, just dropped to my knees and couldn't get up. So. Kind of started over from scratch again, uh, you know, with things the way they are right now, there's not a whole lot of rehab you can do. So everything is just kind of at home with soft tissue and uh, cupping. I cut myself. I do. I have a, uh, a hyperbaric chamber. I, you know, roll out as much as I can. Massage tools, TENS machines, Nordic or uh, uh, what are those? Normatex for my legs and just try to do everything I can to try to be ready uh, to go when this all kind of blows over, but uh, I'm in decent shape right now, um, and just kind of, you know, just playing the waiting game like everyone else. Now, do you have like, is it a medical exemption? Because people at home uh, are not aware of that. So, are you, uh, are you, are the, is the PGA Tour giving you like X amount of events to make X amount of money, or do they let you come and take your time? and do as you please because you've had full status when you left. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's more confusing than I'll try to make it as simple as I can, but basically I have, I think like 18 or 19 events left to make about 250 FedEx cup points. So, um, you know, almost a full year. So like when we do start up, I'm, I'm going to kind of try to figure out the best plan for myself, both physically, you know, where I'm at physically. And then also what are my best chances to, you know, maintain my job. And so I may um, just depend on how things go here, not start until the fall till the new season kind of starts up again and just kind of start from scratch with everyone. But uh, we'll just kind of see, obviously, you know, nobody really knows what's happening right now, but uh, you know, the main thing for me is to, to try to be as healthy as I can. And even when I came back and played there last fall and a little bit here, this uh, winter, January or whatever, I, you know, I, as much as you want to be out there, because that's what I do. That's what I've done my whole life. I don't really know anything different. It's hard to, it's hard to compete when, like I said, when you're not practicing, when you're not feeling uh, as good as you can. And then, you know, mentally it takes a toll on you as well. And when you're not sharp mentally, uh, you know, things maybe get to you a little bit more, you take things more personally, whatever it is. So um, there's a lot I have to figure out, um, you know, before the fall to try to get this back on track. But, I mean, I don't feel like my career is over because I still have kind of some unfinished business. Obviously, I've never won on tour, and that's uh, that's kind of the one glaring thing that's missing from my resume. And I really want to, I really want to take care of that. Um, 
And then I want to play long enough that my kids can kind of enjoy being out there. You know, you see the guys, the kids walking through the locker rooms with their dads and that's a pretty neat thing to be able to give, you know, Ricky Fowler or Justin Thomas or whatever, a little knuckles to, to your son and get a picture with them. So those are the kind of, those are the two main things that are really still driving me. Um, so like I said, we'll just kind of see what happens here in the next uh, few months as this plays out. Now, before we go into your, you know, your, your playing career and all that, what's the, uh, what's that business venture you're on with the, uh, the Prairie Bar, the beer? Yeah, so that's, that's my hat here. Exactly. I saw right, that. So, um, you know, Bard is Dutch for beard. I'm a, of Dutch heritage. Uh, Delette is a Dutch name, Flemish name. And, uh, you know, I normally wear a beard, even though right now I got the quarantine chops going a little bit goofy, but, um, <laughs> which would take me years to get, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, kind of something fun that I started up. Uh, I think this is our fourth year now, maybe even our fifth and uh slowly starting to gain some traction it's actually doing pretty good here in idaho because i'm able to do a lot more uh you know in-store things or go to men's night and uh, you know do some tastings and that kind of stuff but uh it's been fun and like a lot of guys i say all the time like they do wine or whatever i don't know if you've ever been to southern saskatchewan been to saskatoon but uh it's not exactly wine country by any means so (laughs) nobody would buy any wine from a guy who made it from waverly saskatchewan so but we all drink beer there so i figured that was the next best thing where uh for viewers where where can they purchase uh prairie bard is it is it available in quebec or so as of right now we're in western canada um we're working hard to try to get into ontario that's a tough one to crack the LCBO in Canada, it's difficult because uh, pretty much every province has their own laws and rules. And right now, obviously, um, you know, drinking local is a big thing. And so you want to support your your local businesses and stuff like that. So it's a it's a harder thing than you would uh, expect to get distribution across the country. But uh, we're working on it. so right now just Western Canada and then down in the U.S. Uh, in Idaho here where I'm where I'm living now. All right, so you've made, obviously, you've played uh, college golf, right, in the United States? Played at Boise State, yeah. That's how I ended up here in Idaho, yeah. Well, I played at Boise, and then you joined the Canadian Tour. When was your first year on the Canadian Tour, now the McKenzie Tour? Yeah, 06, played out there for three years. Or, sorry, 07, 08, and 09 were my, my three years out there. And uh, I tell everybody, those are the best three years of my life, except for the fact that we were all broke. I mean, you were out there with me, too, but... Uh, you know, me, James and Barrett, Maisie travel together every week together and, you know, three or four guys in a hotel room, the high man sleeping on the floor and just the laughs and visiting basically every Earl's across Canada. And uh, those were good times. So obviously, you know, we weren't playing for the money that we wanted. We weren't really quite living out our dreams like uh, but uh, we had a lot of fun and probably messed around a little bit too much and spent maybe a year or two longer than I should have or could have. But uh you know, you, you develop as a player and uh, maybe it just wasn't my time until I finally got through the through the ranks. Now you, uh, I remember uh, that you made the decision one winter to go to South Africa, right? Yeah. So, was, to, yeah. To play I, was the, playing, the... I was playing uh, mini tours down in Scottsdale every winter and uh, it, it was just kind of, it's kind of boring playing those tours. Like it's just, it's kind of the same golf course every week. And, you know, there's 6,300 yards. They're not real golf courses. You can hit it anywhere. It's like, it wasn't really a, the best players weren't winning and it was frustrating. And I think I just kind of got down on myself and I was just, I was kind of fed up with playing there. And so that's when I, when I, I got on that sunshine tour, cause I think the top two guys in the Canadian tour order merit at the time were given a, a card down there basically. So I went down there three separate times that year which is a lot of travel, but, uh, it was good. I mean, like I, I, before they were big names, I played with Louie and Charles down there and, uh, you know, we were playing great golf courses and it was real golf and against real competition. And I think that, and I won, I had two second places and a win down there in the five events that I played. And that gave me some confidence, especially moving into Q school. Cause that's where it always stumbled. Like I felt like I played good throughout the year, Got through first stage pretty easily every time. And then at second stage, missed it by one twice and by two or three the other time. And, uh, you know, that was, a, it's a little bit different now how Q school works, as you know, but 
back then it's like all you had to do once you got to final stage then the pressure was off you had web status or corn fairy or whatever it is um and i just wasn't able to kind of get over that hump and then that year i just knew that i was playing as well as anyone probably going in there and uh you know when you come in you're playing with confidence it was uh, it was a lot easier to get through so yeah because once you got back from from south africa i mean you you your career took off really uh, you know, you got through Q school and then I believe you played maybe one year on the corn ferry. No, never did. Back, cause back never, then, right. Yeah, yeah. So I finished either sixth or eighth. I can't remember now at uh, final stage. And that got me right onto the PGA tour. Cause at that time, 25, the top 25 got onto the PGA tour. Um, and then, yeah, I played my rookie year, kept my card, which was actually harder than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why. Yeah, Not that I thought very it was hard. easy, but, uh, you know, you've been out there long enough and seen it's, it's, it's hard. Your first year is hard out on the PGA tour. And I think people don't really realize that because they see these young kids coming up that are so polished now and so ready to go and they just have instant success, but that's not the norm. Um, you no. know, there's one or two guys that do that every year and the media kind of jumps on those guys. So they think that that's normal, but at the same time that that one or two guys are doing that, there's 30 guys, who are going back to the corn ferry tour web finals or whatever Absolutely. it is. I, uh, I've been through it. I've been through it personally. And I feel like when you get out there, not only do you want to play all these courses because you've seen them on TV over and over again. So you end up playing everything. Way too and much. I, I've, I found, cause I was, I was on Mark's bag Hubbard uh, during his rookie year. And I found the club manufacturers really, really annoying because you have, Obviously, you might switch a couple couple things in your equipment for for better stuff, but like they're after you constantly because they want you to promote the new stuff when the mm -hmm. stuff that brought you there is just fine. So I thought I thought that was a big difference too. When once we really stopped um, giving in to to the club manufacturers and sticking with what he had, uh, you know, and obviously he had some maturing up to do. Uh, <laughs> we, we have we all have some great hubbard stories but uh and then after that so you were on the pga tour for uh, for for quite a while you had a lot of success with a french canadian on the bag Julien yes, Tudeau, sir. yeah we are still one of your uh close friends i'm sure yeah yeah no jules is the best he was a big part of uh you know my career uh, right from the get-go so 2010 was my rookie year i had uh kind of an old caddy. You probably know Basil. I had him on, him on the bag mm -hmm. for the first year. And then I missed my entire 2011, my sophomore season, because I had back surgery right at the end of 2010. And uh, when I came back in 2012, I was kind of bouncing around and didn't really know what to do. And uh, Jules was working for Chris Barilla on the web tour at the time. But Chris had just conditional status. He wasn't getting into everything. And I remember calling Barilla and I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm looking for looking for a caddy. I know Jules is caddying for you. I'm not trying to steal your caddy from me, even though I kind of was. <laughs> and I'm like, but <laughs> I'm looking for him. He's like, he's like, Graham, he's like, you got to take him. He needs a chance. He's like, I'm playing four or five events this year and I'm not playing well. Like he deserves, give him a shot. So I think I told him it was like a th three week kind of trial. Cause you know, in one week you don't, I, you can't caddy no. for a guy in one week and know, you know, if he's the wrong guy, but you would never know if he's the right guy after one week. Correct. So I yeah. gave him like a three week kind of trial run or whatever. And he was great. And then, yeah, like you said, became a really good friend and um, you know, he's, he's got a little one now of his own, him and Mal. He and does. Super happy for, for him. And, and you see him, you see him grinding out there. Um, you know, since since you had to take a leave of absence, he's he's been on 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 quite a few bags, but he's yeah. he's an excellent caddy. And for my caddy career, not I'm not doing that anymore. Being at Laval and and you know being a broadcaster now, uh, but Julian was instrumental in in you know showing me the ropes because he yeah. he works hard. He really does. Uh, you yeah, know, for and, sure. and he's he's one of those guys that you would always like. There's there's some caddies that kind of sometimes on like the two monday tuesday wednesday they go out almost to try to be seen so that other people will say hey i saw your guy out there working or whatever but you can tell that they're not really doing anything they're just out there to be seen but people would always tell me man like jules i saw jules grinding or he was getting all those numbers or whatever on whatever hole and 
um, you know, I always appreciated how much work that he put into it. And I mean, I love the guy. Um, and then, you know, he, I, and I'm actually happy for him now. He's finally got a full, cause like you said, for two years, he was basically bouncing around bags and that's hard, man. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, in, in one or two weeks, you don't, you don't know the player. You don't know what to say. You don't know what kind of clubs he hits. You don't even know what style of game he plays. And you can't really do much until you've been working for him for probably a minimum, like five, six, seven weeks. And when you're, you have a new bag kind of once or twice a month, it's, it's tough. And like mentally that's, it's tough on a caddy, you know, uh, as much as players always talk about how the game's tough mentally for us, it's, it's the same for, for them. And uh, so I'm happy now he's got a pretty steady thing with Adam Long, who's a, uh, you know, obviously a really nice player. He's got a win already. So, um, you know, I wish him obviously nothing but the best. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to me about your, uh, your president's cup. That was honestly, as far as golf, um, probably the highlight of my career, even though, uh, you know, things didn't go as we wanted to as a team, but, uh, just being on that team and being part of it and going back in the locker room with, you know, hall of famers and, uh, you know, Nicky Price is, is, I don't know if you ever met Nick living down there. And I have, I have yep. he is the nicest person in the entire world. Like, um, so it was just, it was a really, really a treat to, to get to know him. And, uh, you know, I was, I, I played some nice golf that week. I had a great partner with Jason Day and he was playing really, really well as two, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, the only thing that would have made that week better is obviously getting the win, but, uh, you know, obviously, Lifetime friendships, lifetime memories, and a pretty epic party when it was all said and done, even though we lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, you've known, you, you are known for, for one of the best ball strikers uh, on the PGA Tour. Are, is there any guys that when they are hitting balls that you just, you got to stop and watch? Yeah, um, it's funny because like when, when I first came on tour, I... I was surprised at how bad some guys actually hit it from a professional golf standpoint. Like I was, no, actually- you're right. And viewers aren't, aren't, cause I say it all the time. Viewers only see the top the five or shot. 10 or 15 yeah. that week. I mean, I've seen, I've seen some horrendous golf shots out there. Oh yeah. When you're in, when you're playing with a guy on Thursday, Friday, that's six or seven out of the cut number and they're coming down the last 12 holes on Friday and really don't care at all. You oh. you see some some stuff that you'd never expect on the PGA Tour, but um, but anyways, to get back to your question, and uh, like the first time I played with Justin Rose, the first time I played with Rory McIlroy, um, those two guys especially out of everyone, Jason Day too, so like these high high long irons, super straight, the way he hits his, his driver, um, those are the three guys I played. I haven't played with Brooks before. Um, and Justin Thomas too is super impressive, but you can just, the sound is different with, with those guys and especially Rosie Rory. Um, it's just, it's different. And, uh, those, those are the guys who really, really impressed me. I, Baba is really impressive to play with too, with the shape that he, that he, and like, I mean, you see it on TV or whatever, but it's pretty cool to watch in real life too, because he's, he's got such an imagination and he just plays his own game and he's obviously super athletic and sees the game so different than anyone else in the world. And it's pretty cool to watch a guy like that play golf as well. Any chance, uh, have you played with Tiger before? Or have you, have played you with them been once, around yeah. Saturday at the players? It was probably like 2015 or 16, but he was not very healthy and we were kind of in like, you know, made the cut, but we were in like 50th or something. And we were both kind of, I think I shot like one under or something that day. He shot a couple over, like neither of us played great, but uh, that was pretty neat, especially at, at uh, you know, TPC Sawgrass with those massive crowds to play with Tiger. That's something I'll always remember too, you know, for the rest of my Absolutely. career. All right. Rapid fire. Favorite sport team? Calgary Flames, bud. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst shot you've ever hit? Oh, well, actually, it's funny. Me and Cole talk about this all the time. I have this thing where I pop up three woods from, I went through like a two year stretch where if I played a tournament, I'd always pop. Like if I hit three wood off the tee, I would pop up a three wood, but we were playing together at Sony one year 
And it was that we've been practicing and playing together for like a month leading up in December at Scottsdale. Go up there, we get paired together, and we get to the eighth tee, and I pop it up. And you know that little creek that runs across the eighth, but it's like mm-hmm. 140 yards off the tee. Popped it up. It lands in the rocks. You hear a click, and then it clicks against the rocks on this side, and it like shoots it forward, like dead center in the middle of fairway, and I had like 200 yards in. But that was that was pretty bad. I was I was pretty embarrassed about that one. Got got pretty lucky though. Does does any does any shot come to mind from like a playing partner where you just couldn't believe you hit that bad of a shot? Like Colt Colt has hit some horrendous. Uh, <laughs> we all have. That's the thing. I mean, it's this is a pretty humbling game. Obviously, nothing really. If I'll maybe let me let me kind of think of it as we go along here. If if a shot comes up, but. Uh, Yeah, like I said, you see a lot of lot more bad shots than you'd think on the PGA Tour. Absolutely. Favorite on-course beverage, adult beverage? Uh, Prairie Bard, bud. Absolutely. I knew the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> at my, well, at that... my course here, they have it on, on the beer cart, so that's at, uh, pretty much me and all my buddies. If I get them off those White Claws, man, it's like the worst i can't believe people are you them. are you pretty much a beer guy like do you do yeah you drink for it? the most part i i'll mix it i like wine we got a nice wine cellar here um yeah I whiskey tequila i'll pretty much drink anything but <laughs> but i'm a beer guy through and through <laughs> well graham i can't thank you enough uh you know i wish you nothing but the best uh all the health in the world and uh you know i i hope we get to see you back out there uh very very shortly Yeah, thanks, man. I hope so, too. And uh, good luck with your career, too. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you, pal. Bye.